Hello Home Slices, it's Kiara with Home Slice Adulting and I'm coming to you with my review for Love and Hip Hop New York Season 7 Episode 1. I want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers, Shauna, for um, asking for this review. Initially I was not going to review it, but the season does look interesting. So let's get started. First we start off with Cardi B. Now, first off, I'm very happy for Cardi B's success. She's one of the only people in the Love & Hip Hop franchise in general that has really used this platform to take off in multiple arenas. I mean, there's people like Monice <laughs> and uh, a lot of people on Love & Hip Hop Hollywood that have been on the show for three years, you know, like Tierra Marie, and still haven't used the platform to the, you know, the best advantage. So, you know, good on uh, Cardi B for, you know, elevating herself to the next level. We see that Cardi B has bigger boobs. Um, her voice is still annoying and her sister is just as crazy and annoying. Um, it was funny because when they got together, Hennessy seemed to be kind of like riding Cardi's coattails a little bit. She was very happy for her sister's success, but she was like, let's do this forever. And I'm like, Hennessy, what do you do though? Yeah, you can't just be riding your sister's coattails. You gotta have some type of talent as well. But she was saying how now that she is more popular, she has a thousand haters as opposed to three that she could keep her eyes on in the hood. But you know, that's the the, prom, the uh, price of fame. You know, more money, more problems. So, uh, <clears throat> but Hennessy just reassures her. She was like, you know, even Jesus had haters and he was a good man. And uh, we see some guys riding by on bicycles that recognize Cardi. And, you know, we get to see how popular and how famous Cardi really is. But why were there, where was there no tent on those windows? That didn't make sense to me. But whatever. Um, next, we see Cardi B performing on stage with a producer named Swift. And they're all kind of grinding and stuff on the stage. And it's like, you can't really blame them because the stage was only this big. <laughs> so they didn't really have any choice but to grind. But apparently Swift is a producer and Bianca is there watching the performance, I guess, to support Cardi. And um, after the performance is over, they um, go to this little private area, Swift and Cardi, and they have a little conversation about chicken nuggets being dipped in barbecue sauce. And there's clearly sexual tension between them. And we see it and Bianca sees it. So Bianca, you know, rolls her third wheel on over to them and it's like hey guys is this your new boo she just you know put it out there and cardi denied it and um next thing we know swift is gone and um you know bianca is like you know there's definitely some tension between y'all what about tommy now tommy has this traditionalist view of what he wants cardi to do to have babies and stay at home and that type of thing and cardi is not a traditional person and um, I don't think Tommy is right for her, so she should probably drop him so she can do what she wants. But um, <clears throat> next we see Cardi going to the dentist to get her teeth fixed, which, you know, do whatever you want to do. Um, we find out that Swift has a girlfriend that he's been with for two years named Asia, and Asia lives in London. And so, um, like I said, on these reality shows, I talk about them as if everything in it is real, but something about this seems staged. There's no way that a guy would FaceTime his long distance girlfriend while he's at a dentist appointment with the girl that his girlfriend doesn't like. And Asia is like, you know, I don't want you doing this and that with Cardi. And he's like, oh, don't worry. And as soon as Cardi comes out to ask him to hold her hand in the dentist's office. He's like, bye, babe. And I'm surprised that Cardi didn't hear that and didn't ask any questions, but whatever. I think he's lame, and I think Cardi and Asia deserve better. And he didn't even tell Cardi that he has a girlfriend. So, and he's not even cute. Whatever. <clears throat> Next we see Richie D, Cisco, DJ Self, and we get introduced to a new person named Snoop. Now Snoop's real name is Felicia and she got the by Felicia braids. But um, Richie D tells us about his businesses, none of which I know. 
but I'm happy for him, you know, and maybe if he gets some business, he can, you know, find a, a nice woman to settle down. Um, but that's the problem that I have. He was telling DJ Self that he's over being a creep and that he wants to find someone to change his diapers. And that's what I don't like um, about the double standard between men and women. I mean, men flip out when they find out how many uh, men a woman sleeps with or they don't want to, you know, marry anybody that they consider to be a hoe. But um, they will sleep with a million women, wait till they're 50 years old, like Richie D, and be like, oh, I need somebody to change my diapers. What makes you think I want your, you know, leftover behind <laughs> all of the diseases you might have had or all of the children that you might have had with different baby mamas? I don't want that as much as a man doesn't want that. So, you know, get your life. Ugh. Anyways, um, Snoop, Snoop. That's how we're gonna have to say it. Snoop comes over um, to the table and apparently she's like an honorary creep and she doesn't accept that title, but her voice is deeper than Richie D's. And um, she's like very intense for like no reason. She's like, I'm starting my new uh, label or whatever it was, modeling agency, whatever, called uh, Gorgeous Gangsta and I need your help dotting some of these eyes and crossing some of these t's and it's like why why so much why are you putting so much on it but um anyways they see this nice looking lady across the bar and they bet snoop that she can't you know pull this girl but it turns out that it's snoop's um girlfriend uh jay adrian so next we see snoop and jay adrian at this outdoor restaurant um I don't know anything about Snoop. I didn't watch The Wire. It was a little too intense for me. But um, I, their relationship, something about it seems like it doesn't really have any substance to it. That um, I'm like almost 100% sure that Jay Adrian is using Snoop to advance her own career. And um, I guess it's working. So apparently uh, Jay Adrian and Snoop had... Uh, met while Snoop was shooting a movie in Chicago and somebody said she was shooting Chirac but um one of Jay Adrian's friends said Snoop is gonna be here for a few weeks take care of him and Jay Adrian says she's been taking care of Snoop ever since and I'm trying to figure out was Jay Adrian's friend a pimp and was Jay Adrian an escort like who does that who says oh take care of Snoop and you keep taking care of Snoop for months at a time. That sounds, mm, something ain't right. But anyways, um, they call, Snoop calls Jay Adrian bougie cause she don't want to eat at that outdoor restaurant. They had a long distance relationship for a long time and Snoop finally convinced Jay Adrian to move to New York to be with her. So I'm not gonna lie, I was a little judgy when she said that she left her teenage son behind to in Chicago with the son's father while she went to go pussyfoot around with Snoop in New York. And I did not like that. I was like, first off, Chicago, do you know what happens to little black boys in Chicago? I mean, come on. I, mean, I don't know if New York is worse. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but that, some of my that just didn't feel right, but at the, on the same token, you know, men do it all the time. So I don't want to be too hard on Jay Adrian, but it just didn't feel right. But um, next we see uh, Snoop and Jay Adrian at a restaurant and um, they're having dinner. And like I said, I like to pretend like everything is real, but this seems very staged. I don't know anyone who's going up to someone as unknown as Snoop and asking for an autograph and the things that they were saying like oh I'm not gay but if I was you know I'd be with you stuff like that it seemed rehearsed and um Jay Adrian you know took her cue like that and you know acted a fool a plump fool and was like oh we're having dinner you need to back away from her and blah blah blah, blah and just went totally off and Snoop was turned off by that and so was Jay Adrian. Jay Adrian said you're not getting none tonight. So um 
Uh, I forgot to mention that Jay Adrian was upset with Snoop because Snoop has not fulfilled any of her promises as far as Jay Adrian developing her career, which is uh, just another reason why I think that Jay Adrian is using Snoop, if anything, about their relationship is real. So next we see um, Yandy. She's saying that um, her and Mendixie's baby's mothers have failed him um, as far as his request to keep his children together. So um, she's meeting with Samantha and Samantha is saying that we have issues and Yandy was like, I never knew we had issues. And Samantha was like, well, you never cared enough to even ask if we had issues. Now, I've watched a lot of reviews on this and uh, that other people have done about this episode and people kind of take either side. They either side with Yandy um, or they either side with, you know, Samantha or the baby mamas. And I think there's enough blame to go around. <clears throat> I think Yandy's issue is that she, um, thinks that because she is Mendici's wife and because she is the stepmother to Mendici's children, that she takes a little bit more liberty to do things with those children, um, and for those children that she should and that she doesn't consider the actual biological mothers of those children as much as she should and um the baby mothers may have some resentment against yandy um not only because yandy um kind of oversteps her boundaries but because they were not chosen to be the wife um or because you know the whole reason that they you know get a check from love and hip-hop is because of yandy and it's like Samantha was very disrespectful. Um, I, I really didn't like that Yandy did not go off on her real quick. Like, you know, Yandy really should have went off on her for talking to her out of her neck like that. And then we heard why Samantha was really mad is that uh, Yandy took little Mendeecees out of state to go see Mendeecees in jail when she explicitly stated that she did not want her son to go to jail to visit Mendeecees. And um, yeah, that's a problem. So Yandy was definitely wrong for that. But either way, Samantha talked very bad to Yandy and Yandy should have went off on her and, you know, just should have been like, hey, you know what? You don't talk to me like that. I'm the whole reason that you get a check from this show. So you need to calm down before you be uh, off camera all the time. So next we see Kim Bella and Jewels. They live in New Jersey apparently. They have a, a huge house. Um, they have two kids. She says they're very happy and her boobs are much larger. She's done a lot of stuff to herself and I don't like it. She was always a, a pretty girl but the, the contacts and the big hair, something has to go. It's too over the top. But Joel says that he's made sacrifices to be a family man while putting his uh, music career on hold. Yes. And I'll now, I wasn't sure that Jewel's music career was put on hold because his, because um, he wanted to be a family man. I thought nobody was checking for his music and that's why he ain't putting no music out. But he says that the game needs him and Jewel's, I don't know, to me was the weakest rapper in Dipset, but um, he was the cutest, so whatever. Next. Um, we see Kim Bella having the same love and hip-hop argument about groupies being in the studio And I'm like, please don't let Jewels and Kim Bella be the next Max and Brandy, but um Jewels brings up Yandy and um, I guess because of the history that Yandy has with Dipset He wants her to help him get his music career back on track and Kim Bella's not really feeling it because she uh, You know got into some type of scuffle or argument with Yandy about um, Yandy's wedding and um, Joelle's is trying to play peacemaker between them because they were really good friends as we saw in previous seasons. So next, Yandy uh, and Joelle's meet up at, Yandy and Joelle's meet up at, um, at a photo shoot that Bianca is doing for some type of mixtape that apparently hasn't come out yet. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Does Yandy seem like she's stringing Bianca along? I'm not sure. But anyways, um, Joelle said, <laughs> Kim Bella told me to come here to check you. <laughs> and Yandy was like, excuse me? <laughs> and I feel like it's one of those things where he didn't realize what the meaning was of what he, he said. That Kim Bella just told him to go say something and he just said it not understanding what she meant. But um, next we see Kim Bella and Yandy having this meeting. And they're crying and screaming and it's very annoying. 
um, Yandy, you know, said that Kim Bella tried to make Yandy's wedding about herself. And Kim Bella kind of does seem like a, a little selfish. But Yandy has been going through a lot of stuff and Kim Bella really hasn't been there for her. So um, hopefully they squashed everything, they cried it out, they hugged it out. And they'll be good friends for the rest of this um, season. I'm glad they got this little argument over in the first episode. And then drag it out over multiple ones. So yeah, that's it y'all. Um, this review is really short. Thank you. Thank goodness. I'm trying to keep my reviews down to um, get them down to maybe 17 minutes at the most. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm, I guess I'm you know interested in what's going to happen. I know this review came late. Um, but uh, Thanksgiving was a little hectic for us. My family came to visit and it was getting the house ready and starting to cook and grocery shopping and uh, uh, I had to work as well. So it was a lot of stuff going on. But thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you later, Home Slices. Peace.